Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about direct and inverse variations. The direct variation, we're pretty familiar with this equation. It's y equals k, and k is the constant of variation. We'll, we'll see kind of what that, what that is once we actually start solving problems. But y equals k times x. And then our inverse would be y equals k divided by x. So this means that as y increases, x will also increase, or as x increases, y will also increase. It's phrased as y varies directly with x. Whereas this one, inverse variation, this means that as x increases, y decreases. Um, so y varies inversely with x. So it'll make more sense, I feel like, once we actually look at you know, real life problems, because this is really interesting once you start looking at it. So our first question is, suppose it takes 1.5 hours to drive from your school to the lake at 50 miles per hour. How long would your return trip take if you drive 40 miles per hour? Okay, so to figure this out, we actually, um, we need to know which one are we going to use? Are we going to use direct or inverse? Let's think about it. As our speed increases, right, and speed in this case is going to be our y, as our speed goes up, what happens to the time it takes you to get somewhere? Well, obviously the time would decrease, right? So if you go faster, it's going to take a shorter amount of time to get there. So because we have this difference here, that means that we're going to be using this, the inverse. Okay, so we're going to be using this equation. I have to take what they've given me, what I know, and the best way I know how to do these is to make an XY table. I think it just makes everything so much clearer. Now, some of you may have been wondering, I immediately said that speed was going to be Y and time was going to be X. And you may be thinking, well, how, how did you decide that? Well, I always say X is not always time, but time is always X, okay? Anytime that you have months, days, years, hours, minutes, seconds, any type of time passing, that's going to be your x value, your independent variable. So if I see anything with time, I know that's my x. In this case, if it takes 1.5 hours, 1.5 for x at 50 miles per hour. So that's our speed. 50 miles per hour. So let's use this equation. I'm going to bring it down. Y equals K divided by X. And I'm going to plug in what I know Y is and what I know X is. And I'm going to use that to figure out what is the constant. What is that K? So Y is 50. K divided by X is 1.5. All right, now to solve this, I'm gonna to have to go back to some of my algebra rules. Anytime I wanna get rid of a fraction, I can multiply by the denominator. So in this case, 1.5, and it cancels. Just a little, little shortcut. All right, so 50 times 1.5, that's gonna give me 75 equals K. Okay, I always star that because that's going to be very inf important information as I move forward in this problem because I want to know how long X time, how long will your return trip take if you drive 40 miles per hour. So I got to do the same process again, only this time instead of solving for K, I already know K, I'm going to solve for X. So my Y is 40 equals K, which I already found out, 75. That's why we need to know that K so that I can figure out X. Now to solve this using algebra, I'm going to use that same trick again. If I multiply by the denominator, it gets rid of the fraction. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now 40 times X is just 40X equals 75. Now I do need to divide out And 
75 divided by 40 is going to give me 1.875. Okay, and we can round that to say x equals 1.9 hours. It's going to take an hour and a half if you drive 50 miles per hour, and it's going to take almost two hours, but not quite if you go 40 miles per hour. Let's look at a couple more examples. It takes six workers five days to complete a project. How many workers were used if the project only took three days? So let's think, do I want to use that direct or indirect here? We've got the number of workers and then we've got the time it took, and this time they use days, the time it took to get the project done. Let's think, as the number of workers increases, What's going to happen to the time it takes to do the project? Well, our time would go down, right? The more people you have on a job, the less time it takes to do the job. So because we have that difference there, as one goes up, the other goes down, that tells me we're going to be using the inverse. Okay, so that inverse, and I'll bring it over from the other page, is y equals k divided by x, inverse variation. So let's lay out that x, y table. It really helps to see what we're looking at. Remember x, if we've got a time value, that's our x. In this case, it's days. So it took five days for how many workers? Six. We're wanting to know how many workers it would take if the project only took three days. So this time we're looking for y instead of x, and we're still gonna use the same formula. We're just gonna be solving just a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know, that first point, so that we can figure out our k, because we need that to figure out the second point. So for the first one, y is six equals k over x, x is five. So we're going to multiply by the denominator. 6 times 5 is 30, and there's our k. So we know what the constant of variation is. It's going to be 30. So now we can move on to the second point, which is what the question is asking. So for this one, y is still y. That's what we're looking for. k, we now know it's 30. And x is 3. So we want to always multiply by the denominator. So this 3 times y is just 3y equals 30. We want to divide to get y alone. And y equals 10. So let's think about what y was. y is our workers. In this case, it's going to take 10 workers. All right, a student who studied for four hours earned a 90 on their test. If another student earned a 79, how long did the student study? Now, I feel like this is a good time to point out that these are just predictions, right? We know that there's a lot of things that go into a test grade or completion of a project that go beyond just number of hours study, or number of workers. You know, there's a lot of other factors at play. It's important to point out these are not guarantees. These are just predictions based on previous outcomes. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's think about this. Do I want to use that direct or inverse um, formula? So for this one, as a student who studies, so as their time studying goes up, what happens to their grade? Well, we know, using logic, that the more you study, in theory, the higher your grade is going to be. So notice how this time we had, like, difference here. As one went up, the other went down, and we used the inverse. Well, notice in this case, they're both going up. So because they are going in the same direction, that's called direct variation. So for that one, we need not the inverse formula we were using before, but now we're going to use y equals k times x instead of k divided by x, since it's a direct variation. And other than that, works pretty much the same. We're just going to be using this formula instead of the other one. 
All right, so let's lay out our XY chart. And so what do we know? We know if a student studied four hours, remember if we got that time value, that's going to be our X. So they studied four hours and they earned a 90. We want to know if a student earned a 79, how long did they study? All right, so let's use this first one to figure out what K is. So Y was 90. We're looking for K. X is 4. So K, you could put times 4, you could put 4K, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I need to undo this multiplication. And to undo multiplication, we divide. Cancel. All right, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. 90 divided by 4 is going to give me... 22.5 as K. So I always star it so I remember that's my important information moving forward. Now I can move into the big question. Alright, so we're going to use that same formula again. This time Y is going to be 79 equals K. Now we know K. 22.5 times X. That's what we're looking for. And the same thing again, I got some multiplication here. I need to divide, right, divide. And let's see, I'm not going to get a whole number, but 79 divided by 22.5 is 3.51. Or you could say 3.5 if you were rounding. And what is X? Well, remember, X is hours, so it takes approximately a predicted amount of three and a half hours in order to obtain a 79 on this particular test. Okay, you guys try this one. If a meal takes six hours for four cooks to prepare, how long would it take 10 cooks? Remember to lay out your two, you know, as one thing goes up, the other thing either goes up or down, and I will post the answer in the description of this video. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.